Hey everyone, how's it going? This is video number two in our common PC building mistakes series. In these first few videos, we're talking about common mistakes people make when they are choosing parts for their PC build. In this video specifically, we're going to talk about the mistake of spending too much on low impact components and too little on high impact components. Now, what are low impact components and high impact components? Well, this is going to depend a lot on what you want to do with your computer. Since my site and content are geared uh, typically towards building gaming computers, let me explain this from that perspective. To me, high impact components for a gaming computer uh, refers to the type of components that are going to have the biggest impact on your in-game performance. So high impact components for a gaming PC would be first your graphics card, uh, and then second your processor, and third your memory. Low impact components for a gaming PC would be your case, uh, storage options, your power supply, uh, and your motherboard. Yes, that's right, I just put your power supply and your motherboard in the category of a low impact component. I might, I might get in trouble for that one. But this is not saying that those components aren't important, they're incredibly important. However, what I see happen is that first time build, builders will get overly caught up in this idea that they have to use a high quality motherboard and power supply in their builds or their system's gonna blow up. Now what happens is they may have an $800 budget to build a gaming PC with, and then they go out with this idea in their heads and they take it to the extreme and they end up spending 150 bucks on a motherboard and another 100 bucks or so on a 750 watt power supply and that's all gonna go in a system that has a mid-range graphics card in it. And then they're left pairing uh, an Intel Pentium processor with a GTX 1050, which isn't a horrible combination for a budget build, but with an $800 budget, they easily could have gotten a higher end processor and graphics card combo, right? Like a Ryzen 5 1600 and a GTX 1060. Uh, and they still, with that budget, even spending on these ones, they still could have found a decent quality power supply and motherboard that would fit in their budget. Now, the other problem I see that is pre pretty easy to understand why it happens is that people overspend on their computer case, right? So taking that $800 budget, someone out there might end up dropping 150 bucks on a full tower case because it looks badass. But then the cost of that case is going to force them to have to sacrifice on the graphics card or the processor. Now, let me just be clear. There's nothing wrong with overspending on your case or your power supply or your motherboard or even your storage options. In fact, some people build with the future in mind, and so they sacrifice performance now in order to have better upgrade options in the future. So they'll start off with a higher end power supply now so that they can uh, so that they can add a high-end graphics card down the road without also having to upgrade their power supply at the same time. Or they choose a bigger case and a beefier motherboard now because those things are a bit more difficult to upgrade in the future as you have to completely rebuild your system if you want to swap those out. Or still yet, they may even spend more on a bigger SSD because they have a lot of games they want to store and they want the performance gains that an SSD offers. Now, this is a bit different than what I'm talking about because in those scenarios, the reasons for spending more on those low income impact components is pretty well thought out, if not even necessary for those people's goals. Now I'm speaking more to those first time builders whose goal is to play their favorite games on as high of settings as possible, but then who work against that goal by overspending on these low impact components. So in my opinion, a good rule of thumb for anyone who is building a budget oriented PC specifically for gaming is to start out with choosing your CPU and GPU combo uh, and then get in at least eight gigabytes of RAM onto your part list. And then from there, go ahead and work through choosing uh, the rest of your parts. Now there are plenty of good budget friendly cases out there. For instance, the Intermax Ostrog Lite. And there are also a lot of sub $80 motherboards that will get the job done for a mid range single GPU setup. Now there aren't quite as many power, uh, quality power supplies for cheap, but units, units like Corsair's CX series, uh, the gray unit, anyways, make sure it's the gray and black one. They're very affordable, they're readily available, and the CX-550M in particular is good enough to handle most budget-friendly setups. So the main takeaway from this video is that if you are looking to build a gaming computer and your in-game performance is your biggest concern, make sure you are spending enough on your high-impact components and not overspending on lower impact components. Now, if you're at a loss for what a part list looks like that does favor these high impact components without sacrificing too much on your low impact components, check out our build guide on EliteGamingComputers.com, which we've linked to in the description below, as that's gonna give you a handful of part lists at various budgets that you can use as is or as a template to modify to suit your own needs. All right, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check out the next video for another common PC building mistake to avoid.